Welcome, Community Presbyterian Church. We are so happy to be with you. We're getting ready to celebrate Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit is alive and well and welcome at this church. We ask that you sing with us.
Okay, hi everyone. It's, it's great to be here. Uh, this is Pentecost week and I'm being given the opportunity to share about the Holy Spirit. I want to begin with one verse from Romans chapter 8. It says this, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of sin and death gives life and has set you free from the law of sin and death. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of of sin and death. You know, God always intended that uh, he would replace the law with the Spirit. Even in the book of Isaiah when it says, that, Behold, I make all things new. God was talking about the fact that there would be a new day, a new time. Uh, we, and this time, I continuously hear the words, the new normal. You know, what is that new normal? We wear masks, we get locked inside, uh, we have to put on gloves. We have to go around doing the cleansing. The new norm. Uh, God brought about a new normal in his time, in the time of Jesus. If we go back to um, the book um, of Exodus, we find that Moses, uh, on the mountain of Sinai, he uh, was on the Mount of Sinai and was given the Ten Commandments and uh, he had the tablets of stone that were actually written for him by the finger of God. Uh, and his face reflected the glory of God. And he came down the mountain. And the people down there, they were already had become despondent because Moses had been on the mountain too long. And they had started to make themselves a golden calf. And uh, Moses came down and he was so angry with what he found. And he smashed the tablets uh, that had been given to him. And then he uh, separated the people. And it says that 3,000 died uh, on that day. The day the law was given, 3,000 died. But when we come into the book of Acts and we see uh, the book of Acts where the Holy Spirit came, we find that 3,000 were saved on that preaching of Peter on that day. And the law brought death, but the Spirit brings life. And God wants us to come into his life. He wants us to know that he has life for us, life in abundance, and it comes through the Holy Spirit. In the old days, the Spirit used to come upon special people for special reasons. Uh, and uh, there were the priests, there were the prophets, there were the judges, there were different kinds of people that did different tasks, and the Spirit would come on them in order to perform that task. But God always intended that he would pour out his spirit so that we would all be able to move in the spirit of God. Uh, Moses, he has, was stressed out at one time, and God said, choose 30, 72 people uh, from the congregations. Uh, and uh, God poured out his spirit on the 72. And the demonstration of the spirit was on those people. And Moses saw it, and he said, I wish that all the people could receive the Spirit. And that was God's intention. God's intention is always that we might receive the Holy Spirit. In the time of David, uh, David was anointed by God to be the king, but the Saul was still the king. And people were in an in-between place. And they had to decide, where did their loyalty belong to the old king or did their loyalty belong to the new king, King David? Uh, and there was that transitioning between the old king and the new king, who was David. And people were choosing at that time. And there was a group of men, uh, the, they were called the children of Issachar. And it says that the Issachar people were known because they were people that understood the times that they lived in. And they were able to give wise counsel because they understood the times. The Spirit of God came upon them in order that they had that understanding of the times. You know, we are as a church and as individuals in a strange time, the new normal. And it's like a transition in time from being locked up to being let out. But what is it going to mean to us? And what is God saying to us? You know, the Spirit of God is to bring understanding 
of the times that we're in. We need the Holy Spirit. And even as we come up to Pentecost, and it's amazing that the Pentecost Sunday is going to be the Sunday that we're open in this place. Uh, and uh, it's the new, it's a new normal. But you know, I hear people saying, oh, let's just get back to the old. I just want to get back to how it was. Let's, let's just get on with things. I, I know that feeling, Chris, because when I came here to Florida, I had a plan. We had presentations. We had various uh, places we were going to go. We knew exactly what we were going to do. And then suddenly we arrive here, and it's lockdown, and we're not going anywhere. And uh, you know, it's like, God, how are you going to do this? How, how's this going to happen? And we had to begin to find a different way. You know, I had a verse given to me by God right at the very beginning when I arrived in Florida, and it was, cast your net on the other side. And I pondered with that thought quite a bit. You know, what does it mean, cast my net on the other side? You know, in, in that reference it says, Peter says that I've toiled all night and caught nothing. But Jesus said, cast your net on the other side. And he said, at your word, I will, I will do it. And he cast his net. And I've been thinking, Lord, that means somehow that there's another place, another person, a, a different way. You're going to do it in another way. You want me to just reach out in a different way. And, uh, you know, another word that has come up while we've been in this, play, this new normal is the word Zoom. You know, everything's being Zoomed. I'd never heard of it till I got here. I got here and we were going to do the pancake breakfast. And, and I said, well, you know, uh, how are we going to do the pancake breakfast? No one can get together. And they said, Zoom. We're going to Zoom? <laughs> so I thought, what is Zoom? Uh, but soon, Zoom became really, everybody knew what Zoom was. Uh, I had a call from England, and they said, you want to be part of the discipleship group still? You can get connected. You can come in uh, each week. So that's what I'd be doing. Even this morning, I was on uh, for, with England, Zooming, uh, and being able to be connected. Uh, you know, God is finding a new way uh, and doing things in a different way. And we have to be careful not to be hanging on to the old, but we need to be like the Ishika, understanding the times and seeing what else can God do. You know, people have been experiencing different kinds of, uh, you know, we've seen death, we've seen finance loss, we've seen employment loss, we've seen people struggling. Uh, there has been things happening out there uh, that, that seem scary. Uh, but it means that we're being challenged to do something new. The Einstein said, um, if you keep on doing the same thing and expect a different result, that's like the sign of madness. Because you will not get a different result if you keep on doing the same thing. I used to work in the prison, and I used to say to the prisoners, I used to say, if you keep on doing what you've always done, you'll keep on getting what you've always got. Now, if you want something different, then you have to do something different. Uh, because that's the only way that change comes about. And we need to be listening to God as to what it is we should be doing different. You know, the great thing that's happened with the churches being closed is that we're no longer saying, everybody come in, everybody come in, which is what the church does. It's now saying, how do we get out there? How do we get our message out there? And as a result, there are people tuning in to, uh, on, on the uh, internet to the messages of God in much greater numbers than, than ever before. We're just seeing that people are, are listening. Uh, and this is a time for listening. That's how God sometimes gets our attention. You know, it's not until we get our lives uh, sometimes turned upside down that we can actually begin to listen and find out what it is we really need. And God is doing something new. And the newness that God has brought has always come via his Holy Spirit. God wanted to end the law and bring in the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus was born, and from the very moment he was uh, in his mother's womb, he had the Holy Spirit. We know that when Mary went to meet with Elizabeth, that she said, well, as soon as I heard your voice, the baby within my womb, which was John, uh, in Elizabeth's womb, she said, I have felt him leap within me. There was a, a connection between the spirit, in the spirit realm, right there at the very beginning. And Jesus he says he grew up, uh, grew in stature, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. And he came to that time when he was coming towards John the Baptist, and John the Baptist saw him. And John the Baptist said, um, 
Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And he said, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Uh, and uh, after the baptism, when, in, during the baptism, Jesus is being baptized. The Spirit comes down in the form of a dove and comes on to Jesus. And then we find Jesus is taken from there into the wilderness. And it says he is led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. And then it says when he's coming out after going through all the trials and the temptations, it says he comes out full of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes we have to go through something, don't we? We have to go through. It's been interesting doing um, Sunday school here uh, on Zoom. Uh, and we've been listening to some um, videos by Max Licardo. And he's, he's got a book called We Can Get Through This. Or, no, We Will, we will Get Through This. Uh, and it's a book that was written some time ago, but it's now very poignant because of the time that we're in. We will get through this. Uh, and it's been great uh, working with them and seeing how God is saying we will get through this. We will get through this. You know... God has a plan. God has a, an agenda. God has a purpose. And we have to be ones who are listening. This is a great time for listening. Be still and know that I am God. It's a time to listen. You know, what, there was one at night I was in my bed and I was just dropping off to sleep and it felt like I was coming out of my body. It was a very strange sensation. And I was like going with it with my, I thought, oh, this is interesting. Where am I going? And in a moment, I found myself just... Um, with what seemed to be like somebody with me, standing with me. I couldn't see them, uh, but I asked the question. I said, so, okay, so how are we going to do this? That was my question. And in my head, I'm thinking, you know, we need finances, we need sponsors, we, we need to, you know, get to, uh, back to Kenya, we need to get that building up. And I'm, I'm just throwing up the question. I just say, how are we going to do this? You know, like, I, I don't understand how this can happen. Um, and there was no answer, but I felt that God was smiling. And, uh, and it was just like he was saying in that smile, I've got this. You know, I've got this. You know, we, we need to be handing the, everything over to God. This is a time when we need to be just listening to him and handing it over to him. You know, when... That word to me, cast your net on the other side. You know, it's just do it a different way. Just listen and hear what God is saying. You know, if you're saying to yourself, I want to get back to the old, then maybe you shouldn't be saying I'm getting back to the old. Say I'm beginning to embrace the new. What does God want to do? What's God got for me that's different to what I've been doing so far? God's got something else. God's got something more. You know, I said right at the beginning that the Holy Spirit was promised. It was God's intention to pour out his Holy Spirit. We read it in the book of Joel. Um, in Joel chapter 2, and I'm going I'm to read that to you because it says here, And afterwards I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. You know, when we come to the book of Acts, we can read what um, Peter said. He said this, what you see now happening with the pouring out of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. He says, this is that. And he points back to Joel. He says, this, what you're looking at now, is that. What Joel spoke about, that God would pour out his Holy Spirit. We're living in a day when God has poured out his Holy Spirit. You know, I, I was converted in 1966. Uh, and uh, it was a time when the church that I was in uh, would have said that, that the Holy Spirit, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the anything of the supernatural of the Holy Spirit belonged to the Bible. And now we have the Bible, we don't actually need those things because God has given us the Bible and we don't need these signs. They were just there for the setting up and the beginning. Now, that might have seemed okay when it didn't seem like there were any signs and wonders, or it didn't seem like there were any miracles, and it didn't seem like anybody was doing these, these gifts, but suddenly God was pouring out his Holy Spirit. You see, there was a new wave of the Spirit coming. In 1967, Israel took Jerusalem. 
the taking of Jerusalem was a key sign of the end times. They have to be in Jerusalem. We are in a key end time place. And those signs also are connected to the God pouring out his spirit even again in a new way. I remember reading a story of Indonesia when there was a church that was on fire. And all the people in the villages, they were running up to the hill with buckets in their hands to, to put out the fire that they were seeing on top of the church. The people in the church didn't know that this was happening. But then suddenly the fire that was outside on the building came inside and the tongues of fire, like in the book of Acts, rested on the heads of the people. When the people that were running up the hill got to the church and no longer saw the fire, they wondered what had happened. But the people now were making a commotion outside because they were out there with their buckets of water. So the people inside went out. They discovered that all these people were there. They had now, there had been a pouring out of the Holy Spirit. You know, there was then uh, such an evangelism took place there in Indonesia as a result of this. Uh, Teens were going out and, and, and preaching and doing signs and wonders. I remember hearing here in Florida, watching on television, a program. And on the program, they were interviewing people. And they were asking them for different kinds of experiences that they'd had in their Christian lives. And this girl said, she said, she wasn't a girl. She was actually uh, in her early 60s. uh, But she said that when I was a girl, when I was 18, she said, I went on a trip, a mission trip to Indonesia. And she said, you know, we saw, when we were in Indonesia, we uh, we saw bread multiplying. Uh, During communions, we saw water being turned into wine. This was, this was God pouring out his spirit again in our time. And there's been a new way for the Holy Spirit. No one expected, I, I can only speak for what happened in Britain, but no one expected that every church, every church was going to be affected by the pouring out of the Holy Spirit that took place during the 60s. My, my mother uh, had become a Christian. I became a Christian when I was 1966. My mother became a Christian uh, some few years later, probably, I think, in the 70s. Uh, and she had also then um, got connected with the Mormons. They'd come and knocked on her door, and they talked to her, and she kind of, uh, kind of thought it was the same. And I'd become very confused. Uh, and I'd st- started to pray for her. Um, and... God had given me the gift of tongues. Uh, Let me just explain actually how God gave me the gift of tongues. Because um, my church didn't actually uh, talk about it, but they didn't say it's not available, you can't have it, they just didn't talk about it. So I was reading myself through scripture, and I'd I'd had an accident where I'd gone through a window, I'd cut my wrists and my hands, and um, during that time I was praying. And I'd got to 1 Corinthians. I'd got to Corinthians. I'm going to just read it for you. Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, And as I was reading through these passages of Scripture that were in the Bible, God was speaking to me. And I read these words. Follow the ways of love and eagerly desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit and especially that you might prophesy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They speak mysteries in the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening and encouraging and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. That builds himself up. But the one who prophesies edifies the church. I would like that everyone could speak in tongues, but even more that they may prophesy. Now, I read that. And it was the first time I'd ever read it. It's the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. Nothing like that was being taught in my church. Desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I knelt down right where I was. I put my Bible down. I knelt down where I was. And I said, Lord, I desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I desire that I might prophesy. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit came upon me. I began to shake under the Holy Spirit. I said to God, if this is you, if this is you, I want it. But if it's not, take it away. And I continued under the Holy Spirit. The next morning, I went to a bookshop. And uh, I, I was looking through all the books, anything about the Spirit. 
And the assistant saw me and she said, I can see that you're interested in the spirit section. And I said, yeah, and I told her my story. Now, this was a Pentecostal uh, outlet. And um, <clears throat> she immediately said to me, well, she said, from your story, she said, I believe that you received an anointing. But she says, you must speak in tongues. Now, for some time, I was like now thinking, I must speak in tongues. I've got to speak in tongues. Otherwise, this isn't really real until I speak in tongues. Actually, it's not true. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are many and multiple. They are many, many different gifts of the Holy Spirit. And speaking in tongues is one of them. We, I desire to speak in tongues. But, and then God, one day, by myself, it happened. At first, I didn't believe it. I went to bed thinking, that wasn't real. I just made those words up. That, that didn't really happen. But in the night when I was asleep, I, I was dreaming that I was in a village, uh, like a, an Indian uh, place. And uh, I heard the people singing. And then, as I was listening, I realized that I was singing. And I was singing in a language that I didn't understand. And I knew that I was speaking in tongues. So when my mother went through this experience with the Mormons, I thought to myself, I need to really pray for her. And, and uh, I believe sometimes that you don't know what to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for you with words and groanings and utterances. And uh, so I just began to pray for my mother, and God's Spirit took over and gave me a prayer in tongues for her that was, that was so powerful. It was probably the strongest time at that time that I'd actually experienced tongues on my own, praying for something. And uh, the next morning, my mother phoned, and she said, uh, you know, she said, last night I had a dream. She said, I dreamt that the Mormons had knocked on my door. And they said to me, we're thanking you, she said, for uh, investigating and being a seeker after truth. Uh, and then in the dream, she said, no, she said, I don't want, want anything more to do with it. The next morning, the Mormons turned up. They knocked on her door. They said, we want to thank you for investigating. And she remembered and she said, no, I don't want anything more. And she told them, I dreamt this last night. And they said, well, that was the devil trying to stop you from seeking the truth. She said, no, that was God trying to help me. And she came out. And when she told me this, I thought, my mother needs to be really filled with the Holy Spirit so that she can live her life in the power of the Holy Spirit and not be taken from one thought to another and be persuaded in strange ideas. So I made up my mind that I would see her, and I was to see her over a Pentecost weekend. And uh, so I thought this would be an ideal week to, uh, weekend to pray. So I went down there, I was there for the Saturday. On the Saturday, things happened, we went out, we had a day out, we did various things, but it didn't seem like there was time to pray. On the Sunday morning, my mother came to me and she said, you know what, last night, she said, I had this strange dream. She said, I dreamt I was sitting by a brook and there was water rippling past and I could hear it. And I said, you know, that is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. I said, yesterday I should have prayed for you to receive the Holy Spirit. I will pray for you now. And I prayed for her that she would receive the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit would come upon her and that she might experience God in a new way and even that she might speak in tongues. And... Uh, Anyway, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened that day. The, the, the day went past, I went home. But the following week, she had gone to see my sister. She was sleeping in my sister's house. And um, my sister wasn't even a Christian at that time. Uh, she is a Christian, she became a Christian, um, but she wasn't a Christian at that time. And uh, my mother in the night had the same dream, only this time the noise that she could hear of the water rippling over the stones was coming out of her own mouth, and she was speaking in tongues. She got herself out of the bedroom because there were other people asleep in the room, went downstairs to the kitchen, and she says, for an hour, this bubbling sound, this sound came out of her mouth that was speaking in tongues. She, she was released into it. God had given her these tongues. She was so excited with this that she wanted to tell people in her church. Now, she too belonged to a brethren church, and they don't really want, uh, would not really be that happy about her spreading this particular message. But she went there and she told her friend, and her friend was wanting, actually, to also speak in tongues, and they prayed together. Now, this, this lady, she was uh, hoping for her children to come to see her at Christmas, but there was a snowstorm 
up north in England and prevented the, ch the children getting down. So the, the mother was on her own. She was also not very well. Uh, and she was lying in bed on Christmas Day, feeling not very well, and speaking to God and saying, God, you know, I ought to really just go home now. I, I really ought to just be with you. I, I don't need to be here anymore. Uh, and um, Jesus appeared to her in the room. Jesus appeared to her. And she said, have you come to take me home? And he said, no. I've come to give you a gift. And he breathed on her. And she received the Holy Spirit. The next morning... She, she knew that, that, that something had happened. She knew that something had gone on during that day. Uh, she had, and she stood by the window of outside, looking out. And as she was looking up at the sky, she said, something came and she was filled with the Holy Spirit in such a way she began to speak in tongues. She received the gift of tongues. God had breathed on her his life. He'd given her a gift on Christmas Day, and she was speaking in tongues. You know, God is still moving in the miraculous. God is still moving through his signs and wonders. He's bringing us, you know, uh, his life in these days so that we can demonstrate his power. We, don't, we need a new normal in our churches. We need not to go back to exactly as it was, but we need to be asking the Lord, how should we be doing this? How should I be doing this? What is it that you have for me? What new thing should I be moving into in the Holy Spirit? What new thing should I be receiving from you so that I can demonstrate your power? You know, uh, when Jesus came out of the wilderness, uh, being in the power of the Holy Spirit, he went to the temple. He went to the temple and uh, he picked up the scroll that was there, 500 years old, the book of Isaiah, and he read these words. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of his favor. You know, he declared this, he said, this what I'm reading is now happening in your presence. What Isaiah said is here now. And he was saying and declaring himself to be the Messiah. When Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost, he looked back to Joel and he said, this is that, that Joel was prophesying, is happening here and now. You know, we have Jesus Christ who has died for us. He's our advocate in heaven. We have the Holy Spirit who is in us and is our advocate on earth. He is the one that stands by us. He is the, our helper. Recently, um, while I'd been here, my mother died. And uh, on Tuesday, we did Zooming. We Zoomed the funeral. And uh, there were only 10 allowed to be at the, uh, the crematorium. Uh, but the rest of us were on Zoom. And I was sharing on Zoom with everybody. And... Um, before my mother had died, God had uh, given me a dream, and it was the night before she died. And in the dream, I was sitting next to her on the bed, by, the bed, by her bedside. And um, I said, Mom, you know, it's time you went to heaven. And my daughter in the dream was in the room, and she said, No, don't say that to her. We should pray for her healing, not that she should tell her that she should die. But my mom was smiling. Uh, and uh, she said to me, am I really going to heaven? And I said, yes, you are, and they're all waiting for you. You see, God has prepared a place for you in heaven. Uh, and uh, the, I woke up in the morning with uh, Debbie coming in with the phone and saying, your sister's on the phone. You need, need to speak to her quickly. And I spoke to my sister, and my sister said, Mom, it's just giving her last breath. And she actually did. She gave her last breath and she said to me, she's gone. She's gone. But God had already been given me that time with her. You know, we are God's people and he's got a purpose for us. And we need to declare it. We need to let people know. 
We need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to get in his agenda and understand what it is he's doing in these times to be like the people of Ishika that understood what God was saying. You know, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth and will tell us what is to come. Uh, and we need to be listening. Nobody knew, nobody knew that this was going to happen. COVID-19. I, I didn't read of anybody actually prophesying COVID-19 back, you know, a year ago. Um, I, 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 it's, it comes, got suddenly, who could imagine that we would all over the world, the whole world would get locked down? Who could believe that? And we are having this new normal. God can do anything at any time. And we need to be listening because God wants to do something new in this day. And we need to be saying, Lord, I'm prepared. I'm ready. I'm, I'm wanting to be in this. I want to be part of what you're doing for the, for the gospel, for evangelism, and to see your gospel go out into the world. I want to be one who is anointed to set captives free and to preach your good news for the sake of God. Amen. In today's fast-moving world, smartphones are integrated into our lives. We bank and shop on our smartphones, and many of us want to give with them too. Giving to the church with a text message is fast, easy, and versatile. With Give Plus Text, you can make a weekly offering or respond to a special appeal in just seconds. To give, you enter the church's 10-digit Give Plus text number and the amount you wish to donate. Then, send your text. The first time you contribute with Give Plus Text, you'll receive a secure registration link. Click the link to go to our secure website where you'll enter your contact and payment information. Tap Process when you're done. After you've completed your registration, a text reply will verify that your gift has been received. We'll also email you a receipt. For future giving, you simply send a text with the amount you wish to give, and it will process automatically. You can also choose to make your gift recurring. Give Plus Text is that easy. Register, give, repeat. Call or visit the church office to ask about Give Plus Text and the other electronic giving options we offer.